So for you guys that are just starting out and you wanna buy some equipment, you wanna buy some quality equipment, not the $30 radios, but rather the $300 radios, and you wanna do it on the cheap. Guys, have I got a show for you today. I'm calling this episode, How to Score a Ham Shack for Next to Nothing, this time on K6 UDA Radio. Here's a quick update and a mini review of the MFJ148RC dual time zone clock. As you can see by the little bars next to the second hands, the atomic clock is hooked up and it is in perfect time. And from the top, you've got a uh, 10 minute timer button. So when you're in a super long QSO or you're running a net, you know uh, when you've legally got to throw that call sign out. There's also a backlight button on the top, which emits a really nice, even amber light for about five seconds. Flipping it over, it has a handy little desk stand with a very positive lock on that. And if you want to hang it up, it has a screw hole for that. Moving to the back, you've got controls for the atomic clock on and off. 12, 24 hour time, daylight savings time, and all the time settings for one and two. The batteries on this thing are a, uh, just a standard couple of double A's. They'll last for about a year. And you could see the little maps in the corner there. Nice, big, bright display. So anyway, that's it. Uh, dual band clock or dual time clock for you from MFJ. Contrary to popular belief, I'm not made of money. I kind of traded up, started out small, traded up in my ham radio equipment list from very cheap stuff to what I've got now. Yeah, I've spent a lot of money on ham radio. Then again, I've also scored some great deals. I mean, really, really fantastic deals. Take this little guy, for instance, ID51, this is the original one here, and this little guy I picked up right after they came out. These were going for three to $400 on the open market. That was used, new, whatever, because they were the hottest commodity out there. I started scouring eBay and all the usual sites looking for a deal. Well, I found one. Using some search terms, some really open-ended search terms, I found this radio on eBay. It was listed as an ID51 transducer. Yes, you heard me right. This radio was listed only as an ID51 transducer. Needless to say, not a whole lot of people were bidding on this. So I did a little bit of research and I come to find out that this radio was listed in Florida from a pawn shop. A pawn shop, you say, but they're not a reputable radio dealer. No, they're not. And because they didn't know what the hell they had and they didn't know how to list it, I bought this radio $200. There was two bids on it when I bought it. I'm going to give you a list of things to do and not to do when you're buying used and you're buying online. Almost everybody starts their search on QRZ looking through the used equipment. Be patient. These guys are generally asking the moon for their equipment. It's not worth what they're asking for the most part, and it's your job to negotiate a better price, but you got to be patient because there's a lot of guys that'll just pay whatever these guys are asking. I don't know. They, they got crazy money. They want to pay the stupid tax. I mean, why would I buy that machine used for $950 when I can get the same machine for $979 brand new? I usually like to start my searches pretty local. So I troll the pages of uh, Craigslist 
often. And I'm real wide search terms. I mean like ham radio, something like that. And I just kind of pick out what catches my eye, whether it might be a Jeep or a uh, or an HF rig. And if you find something that does kind of interest you, take a good look at the ad. Is the seller local? Does he list a phone number? Does it look like he really wants to sell this thing? Or is he just trolling the pages? It's my personal belief that if a guy really wants to sell something, he's going to leave a good way for you to contact him other than the Craigslist email. I love shopping on eBay because it's a national or an international uh, audience and it's very, very competitive amongst the sellers. I normally start with some really broad search terms like ham radio again and then I'll try narrowing my search down if I'm looking for something specific like just a model number IC7300 and that gives you a lot of returns it'll give you parts all kinds of stuff but uh, it'll give you the widest range of uh, sellers possible once you've found what you're looking for, now it's time to start looking at the price, the shipping costs, and uh, things like seller feedback. Real important on eBay uh, so you're not dealing with the scammers or the guys that are going to char charge you uh, $50 for shipping on a $100 item. What I really love about eBay is the buyer protection. Look, if everything is everything in the ad, if you, uh, if you look at the ad very carefully and it says it's working perfectly or it's brand new, it comes with all the accessories and it doesn't, and your seller won't make good on it, eBay is going to make good for you on it and they'll take the money right out of the seller's pocket. And yeah, when you come across these seemingly really good deals, you want to look at, number one, the seller's information, their feedback, and uh, all that good stuff. And then number two, carefully read their description. Because this guy obviously either doesn't know what he's got, or he's setting you up to buy a piece of junk. I don't know which. But if you want it, bid accordingly. eBay offers some really, really good tools. And one of my favorites is this little button off to the left and you can look at sold listings only. These are real prices of what guys have actually paid for equipment. Uh, no BS, no garbage, no inflated anything. You get what's actually being sold out there and here I'm looking at Ameritron amps. Uh, so I know what the market will bear when I go to make my uh, selection. I'll use this tool even when uh, I'm not bidding on something on eBay. When it comes to a guy's package deals like this, uh, I have mixed feelings. On the plus side, the guy's taking the time to match up an a tuner, a radio, and a power supply, but what, at what cost? Uh, to you. Can you buy these things separately for a lot less money? And sometimes you can. Sometimes this guy will be uh, willing to uh, really work with you on the price too. Don't be afraid to make an offer. When it comes to paying for stuff online, I am a huge fan of PayPal. Been using them for years. I've never had a problem. Um, they have buyer protections. You're not putting any of your personal information out there to vendors or individuals. The buyer protection from PayPal is second to none. Look, I've been, uh, I've been ripped off on eBay or other sites. And when I use PayPal and I don't get what I pay for or I get less or it's busted or whatever and the seller will not cooperate with me PayPal has always stood behind me and refunded my money and they go after the seller I don't care what happens after that 
I've got my money back. Oh yeah, I almost forgot guys. I'm giving away a radio. What's in the box? Nice. Hey, remember guys, keep subscribing at 5,000. We give this bad boy away. And I'm gonna ship this thing back to uh, Ellacraft. They're gonna check it out and they're gonna send it to you factory fresh all over again. Here's how this works. 5,000 at 5,000 subscribers, the contest starts. That's when I ask for submissions. Not before, not after. Here's what you're gonna do. 130 words or less or a 30 second video. Guys, I got nothing else. So I guess that's it for me. Um, happy hunting online. And, uh, and I hope you score the radio of your dreams. So anyway, guys, I'm Bob, I'm K6UDA, and I'm out of here. 7-3. And because the lawyers all said that I had to put this up here, here it is, all the little rules.